Hello everyone and welcome back to our project of deploying an NFT smart contract with Python. In this step, we are going to build a Solidity NFT smart contract without a library. We're inspired by the Open Zeppelin library, which is an open source library for contracts like coins and NFTs. So here we can see the erc721.solidity file, which is the standard for an NFT. So you can see the implementation here for your standard NFT contract. And we're going to be building one from scratch that looks similar to this one from the library. Typically you want to use a library, but Open Zeppelin isn't supported in Google Colab right now. So that's why we're building our own NFT from scratch instead. But if you are building a project off Google Colab, then you can use a library so that you don't have to create your NFT from scratch. For our purposes, let's go to remix.ethereum.org here. We're going to build our NFT smart contract because we can also compile and test it out here. We don't have to build it on Remix, but it will allow us to test it out. Then we'll put it into Google Colab just by copying and pasting. So we're going to create a new file called Mammoth NFT. Then let's build out the Solidity code for our NFT smart contract. So at the top of the file, we need the license. Well, let's use SPDX license identifier of MIT, an open source smart contract. Then we have to pass in our version of Solidity. So we'll use Pragma Solidity version 0.8.12 and higher. Make sure that this matches with your Solidity compiler version that Remix is currently using. Okay, there we go. Next up, let's create the contract. It should have the same name as the file for consistency. In here, we're going to have a string that is a constant called name. We'll give our NFT a name, Mammoth. We'll also create a public constant symbol, a symbol for this NFT, MMTH. We'll create an event for transferring, which takes in an address indexed from who we're transferring the NFT and then to whom we're transferring the NFT. We'll also have a token ID for which NFT we are transferring. So that will handle NFT transfers. We'll also have an event of birth. Each birth will have an owner of the NFT, a uint256 of the mammoth ID, a uint256 of the mother ID, a uint256 of the father ID, and the uint256 of the genes per each mammoth character. Next, we'll have a structure to represent the mammoth, and it's going to contain all of these, the genes, the father ID, the mother ID. So let's create the struct. We'll start with a uint256 for the genes, then we're going to build a uint64 for the birth time. We'll have a uint32 for the mother ID, a uint32 for the father ID, and finally a uint16 for the generation of the mammoth character. Next, we need a list to store all of the mammoths, so we'll build an array called mammoths. We'll have a mapping that maps a uint256 to an address. This will be public and it will map the index of the NFT to the owner. Next up, we have to count ownership tokens. So we'll have another mapping with an address mapped to a uint256. This will store how many tokens does the owner have. We'll have another mapping of addresses to a uint256 list. This is going to list each owner's NFTs. So we'll have owner to mammoths. It will store the IDs of all of the NFTs that that owner has. We'll have a function that allows us to check the balance of an owner, which will be an external view function that returns a uint256 of the balance. We're going to return the ownership token count at the current owner. So this will tell us how many NFTs they have. We'll also have a function total supply, which will tell us how many total NFTs there are. We'll have a uint argument and we'll return mammoths.length. 
We'll also have another function that will be owner of, which will be a uint256 taking in an, a token ID. It will tell us who is the owner of a specific NFT. It will return the address of the owner. And we're going to use mammoth index to owner for this. That is our state variable here, the mapping, where we have a mapping of the index to the owner. And we'll pass in the token ID that we want to find the owner of. Then we can get all the mammoths for each owner. So we'll create a function called get all mammoths for passing in some owner. This will be an external view function that returns a list of their NFTs. So here we're going to pass in a uint memory and we'll call this the mammoths. We're going to return our owner to mammoths and here we're going to grab at the owner. Now for this to work, let's see, we have to make sure that get all mammoths for is going to contain all of these mammoths and return them. So I'm going to just have an underscore here. Okay, so that way we can reference the mammoths that they own. Then we'll have a function called owns. This will take in an address of a claimant, a uint256 of a token ID and an internal view type. And it's going to return a Boolean. We're going to return the mammoth index to owner at the token ID. And we're going to check if it equals the claimant. So this will return true if the owner is the claimant. Then we'll build a function to perform a transfer. So we'll call this transfer. We're going to take in an address to and a uint256 of a token ID to transfer. This will be an external function. First, we're going to require that two is not equal to address zero. So it's not being burned. We're going to require as well with the require statement that two is not equal to address this. So you can't transfer to yourself. And we're going to require that the sender who's trying to transfer the token actually owns the token. Okay, so we're requiring that they actually own that. And also just be careful about the parentheses here. Make sure that owns takes in the two arguments. Then we can actually perform the transfer. So I'm going to call underscore transfer, which we'll build out. We'll send in the person who wants to transfer to whom they are transferring the NFT and which NFT are they transferring. So now we have to build out that function underscore transfer to actually do the transfer from someone and then to someone. We have to pass in the token, what we are transferring. This will be an internal function just used in this file and its children. Then we're going to take our ownership token count and at the to address, we're going to increase it by one. Then we're going to take mammoth index to owner and at the token ID. So for the NFT, we're going to change who owns it to the recipient. We're going to take owner to mammoths at the recipient and we're going to push to them the token ID so they now own it. Then we're going to check if the sender is not equal to the initial address. Then we're going to call ownership token count at the sender and decrease it by one. We're also going to remove the token ID from owner. This will be a helper function that we'll build that will take in from whom are we removing and which token are we removing. Then finally, we're going to emit a transfer event from someone to someone else and with the token ID. So now we have to build out this function, remove token ID from owner. So let's create the function. It's going to take in an address of the owner and it's going to take a uint256 of the token ID to remove. And this will be an internal function. Then inside of the function, we're going to create a uint256 called the last ID. 
and we're going to grab owner to mammoths at the current owner and we want to grab at the owner to mammoths at the owner so the NFTs that they own at the length minus one, which means we're just getting their last ID. Then we're going to loop for int i equals zero up until i is less than owner to mammoths at the current owner dot length. So we're looping through all of the NFTs that they own. And we're going to check if the owner to mammoths at the owner and at the current index is equal to the token ID that we're trying to remove. Then we're going to take the owner to mammoths and at the owner at the current ID we are going to set it to the last ID. Then we're going to take the owner to mammoths at the owner and we're going to pop which means we remove the last item the last item now being the NFT that we want to remove. So that's how we can remove an NFT from an owner. One more thing we need are functions to create NFTs. So I'm going to create a function called create mammoth generation zero, taking in a U into 256 of the genes containing the data about the NFT. And we're going to return a U into 256 in here, we're going to return create mammoth, which is a function that will create, passing in the mother ID, the father ID, the generation, the genes, and the owner. So then let's create that helper function, create mammoth. This will be a function called underscore create mammoth. This will take in the mother ID, as well as the father ID, as well as the generation of the mammoth and the genes or details about the mammoth. And finally, as well, it will take in the owner. And this is going to be a public function that returns the uint256 for the NFT. Then inside of this function, we can create a new NFT. So I'm going to start by creating a new mammoth in memory called underscore mammoth. Then we'll instantiate the mammoth struct, passing in genes for it, as well as birth time, which we can get from a uint256 of the block timestamp when the block was created. Also, we can pass in a mother ID of a uint32 of the argument for the mother ID. Similarly, we need the father ID. So for that, we can wrap the argument for the father ID as well. So for the father ID, we can pass in a uint32 of the argument father ID. And finally, for the generation, we can wrap a uint16 of the generation argument. All right, so that is going to create a mammoth in memory. Let's just check this and make sure that you spelled all of your arguments correctly. So here we have an undeclared identifier of the underscore father ID just because we didn't spell it correctly in the argument name. Okay, so here we have just some warnings that we haven't used the, some of the variables, but we will use them now. So we've created the mammoth. Next, we're going to take all our mammoths and we're going to push to them the new mammoth. So this is like minting a new NFT because we're creating a new mammoth. We're going to get their ID but with new mammoth ID by getting mammoths dot length minus one, which will give us the index of the mammoth in the list. We can then emit a birth. So we can birth using an owner who owns the NFT. What is that ID? What is the mother ID? What is the father ID? And what are the genes? Because that's what the birth event requires. Then we can transfer from address zero to the owner, the new mammoth ID. Then we can return the new mammoth ID. All right, so there we go. That is going to be our NFT smart contract that we created from scratch. So this is mimicking some standard NFT functions and properties like minting and transferring. So that is what we created with this smart contract. Again, you can use a library like Open Zeppelin. This is the recommended way to build NFTs. But for Google Colab, we're just going to be using our NFT from scratch. 
So our next step is going to be to take the code that we wrote for the smart contract and to paste it into our Google Colab and then compile it in Google Colab with Python. So don't miss the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.